For this guide, I'll be using Xiaomi Mi 11. It's pretty, isn't it? You can watch the review in the corner if you're interested. Now, I have Xiaomi Mi 12.5 Global MIUI. So this is what we're going to be using, and you can see this is the latest version of the Xiaomi Mi 12.1.5. Now, first of all, make sure you have proper driver for your phone. So you need Android drivers, you can Google those. I also link them in the description it's going to be all the links for all the tools using. You need SDK platform tools. Then obviously you're going to need the ROM. This is the website where I got mine from and you need a, well, look for your device. If you don't use Xiaomi Mi 9, it's best to use a code name. You can just type it in address bar. Then look for your region. The ROM it should be using uh, basically from the same region and then browse for the correct version of the MIUI. I'll uh, expand on that a little bit later, but you're looking for the fast put version of the ROM, so make sure you download the correct version of it. Now that you've got this, another piece of uh, software that you're uh, going to need is Xiaomi Unlock Tool. Download this as well. Now, next up is going to be Flash Tool and that we're going to use to push the ROM, a fast put version of the ROM, and obviously to rotate, it, I'm going to use Mag Magisk. Right, uh, make yourself into a developer, tap a couple of times into that menu, and then in additional settings, you'll see that we have a developer options. I'll also show you that my phone right now is locked. You have to toggle this uh, to allow unlocking. You'll see this is a phone being locked on the latest version of Xiaomi Mi UI ROM. And I'll show you how to get USB debugging. Uh, use that menu to get this and also uh, allow secure uh, debugging as well. It's going to be handy. It's a couple of annoying steps, so I'm just going to skip through them. Now, if you did everything correctly and you've got drivers, when you plug in your USB cable, you'll see that prompt. That's great. Now, it's a bit unfortunate news. If you haven't attempted unlock, you'll have to wait, and there is no way around it, unfortunately. So it's seven days by default. Now, seven days later, I was actually able, well, later, I was able to do it. So first, I need to power off the device and put it into fast boot mode by uh, pressing volume down and power button at the same time. Once in fast boot mode, we can start. We're going to start with unlocking. Use the unlock tool and hit refresh if you can't see your phone on the list. You'll see the status locked. It only takes a couple of seconds to unlock it. So when ready, press unlock and your phone will well, get unlocked and it will reboot automatically. Now the unlock tools won't confirm that the phone is unlocked until you basically get, get it back into the fast boot mode, but you'll be able to see that in the menu. I'll show you how. First boot after unlocking will take extra time because you have to activate the device as well. So make sure you have correct credentials in the MIUI uh, for your Mi account. Now, you can skip everything in terms of this first setup because we're still going to be rooting the phone, which means that we're going to be resetting all the settings again. So once the setup is complete, uh, if you go to that familiar menu where you're about the phone, going to the developer settings, uh, you'll see that your phone is unlocked and that should be displayed in here. Me, unlock status, unlocked. And then if you put it back into fast boot mode, you can also verify that with the unlock tools. Now put your phone again into fast boot mode. I'm going to use Mi Flash tool to actually flash the fast boot version of the ROM on your phone. There are a couple of quirks. First of all, if you have an error in this stage, then create a log uh, folder into root directory of the installation of your Mi Flash. Okay, let's get started. Select your ROM, uh, navigate to a folder, and make sure in the same directory as your flash all scripts. Now, first error that you can come across is very important. This is anti-rollback check. I'll show you how to skip this, but it's important that you understand that this can break your device. Flashing all the version of ROMs can break your device, so make sure your uh, ROM number or build number is the same as the one flashed on your device or newer. Now, you have to edit two um, files. It's flash all sh and flash all bat. 
this is the ones we're going to be using in this tutorial. So all you have to do is just edit them with Notepad and remove uh, the section that is responsible for anti-version checks. Now that everything is good, you can encounter another error, which is no search file on directory. This is where you have folder structure with spaces. For some reason, this tool doesn't like spaces, so make sure you eliminated all the spaces and you can start flashing your device. This will take about seven to eight minutes, depending on your computer and the phone. Now, around the mark of 300 seconds, and the software displayed flash complete, however, there was still progress going. I think it referred to one of the uh, bigger files, so make sure you don't interrupt it until you actually see the phone reboot, because that's what's supposed to happen. Now, in this instance, because I've done it several times, I also got this error, which means that the software was not able to verify when the flash was complete. However, the flash was successful, as you can see. Now on this step, you can actually now set up the device properly because we're not going to remove any uh, personal settings anymore. So go back to developer settings and enable U uh, USB debugging and secure USB debugging. Send Magisk Manager onto your device and then head to your fastboot version of the ROM. In images, you'll find the boot image file. Also send it to your phone. Now on your phone, locate uh, the Magisk Manager and install the app. You might need to go through a couple of warnings first to achieve that, but once you've got it open, hit install and look for that boot image on the location you dropped it in. I dropped it into a download so I could find it quite easily using a menu on the side in my image ex or file explorer. Select the boot file and patch the file. It will create a copy, patched copy, in a download folder of your phone. So go back to your computer and grab that file. In case the file isn't showing up on your computer, just replug your phone and you'll see that it is, uh, there is a patched file for you to download onto the computer in the download section of your phone. We're going to use ADB to flash this boot image onto your phone, but first it's a good idea to set up our environmental path. Look for environmental variables in your Windows machine, and then you'll notice you should have a path leading to it. Now, I already have it, but I'll show you how to uh, set it up from scratch. So uh, first, I'm just gonna delete it, it's gonna be easier. So then I'm gonna delete that, that, and I'm gonna set a new path. So hit new, and then browse, and navigate to where you dropped your ADB uh, tools folder. You should just select platform tools, and the one that contains all the files important to that installation and save it all. That way you will be able to use ADB from any folder. Now, once again, put your phone into fast boot mode and when ready, return it to your PC and open PowerShell window by uh, right clicking and holding shift down at the same time. Type in fast boot, flash, boot, and then name of the file that you have in your folder. That's gonna take only a couple of seconds. And once the flash has been completed, you can restart it directly from PowerShell by using fastboot reboot command. Android might take a little bit longer first time to boot, but once it's uh, fully booted, you should be able to check that you have a root on your phone. Well, the, my favorite way of checking it is obviously installing the root checker app and hitting that uh, button to verify that you do indeed have a root. Once you're sure that everything is working just fine, it's time to fix Google Pay. Without this fix, you won't be able to actually add any payment cards to Google Pay because, well, Google Pay will recognize that your phone is rooted and will refuse it to do so. There is a fix though. First, clear it from the cache and close the app. Open Magisk again. And even though it fails safety net, uh, all we have to do really is just scroll to options and hit Magisk Hide to enable um, extra menu and ability to hide from different apps. Now in that menu, you should be hiding yourself from two apps. It's Google Play Services and Google Pay. So select Google Pay as well. Now close the app and let's get working on getting that fixed. First, you need terminal emulator. Second, you need SQL uh, Lite database editor. Open the database editor, grant the root access, and navigate to the following location. File Explorer, and then data. So look for data again. Then com, 
Google Android GMS inside databases and then the file DG. Now you'll see five main roles and some of the roles will have a test word in it. Look for all of them and modify the C column into zero. Once you've complete every single row that had it, head to a terminal emulator, uh, grant uh, root permissions with su command, and then open that location again. Now location was obviously CD to open and data, data, com, google, dot android, dot gms, then databases. Once in that location, use the command c mod, SCH mode for 40 to lock the file and then you will be able to add your payment method. This time around you'll see that you'll be able to go to the next step and successfully add the card. And don't worry if Google Pay shows you that the card isn't fully set up. That small icon might say otherwise, however, Google Pay fully working and operational. Just check this out. Thanks for shopping at Tesco.